Hi everyone, Dr. Kiki Fontenot again, here to talk to you this time about the cucurbit family. Now the cucurbit family is, like the legume family, very wide in the number of plants that grow in it. We're standing right here next to some cucuzza, which is a long Italian squash, you can see. Cucuzza is going to be in the cucurbit family. Cantaloupe, watermelon, squash, zucchini, pumpkins, gourds, cucumbers, these are all you could say cousins in the garden. They're all cucurbit plants. Now, this is a gorgeous cucurbit cucutsa growing here in the Student Sustainable Garden at LSU, and um, it's doing great on this trellis. We're not gonna need a trellis for every single cucurbit crop, but we'll talk about the ones you do and don't. First, we need to talk about planting them though. So let's come in here and look at my hands. What we see here are various cucurbit seeds. When we're looking at these, these right here are birdhouse gourds. I actually harvested these out of birdhouses grown at my house. And you can see they're long and narrow seeds compared to their cousins, cucumbers right here, long and narrow again, but much smaller than these. These are going to be, these are bright green in my hand because they've been treated with a fungicide. That's the only reason they're that color. Normally they would be this pale kind of tan color like you see here with the squash seeds that are a little bit wider and here with the narrower cantaloupe seeds. Remember, these are all similar. So for why I'm showing you the seeds of these plants is because we always plant seeds twice as deep or two to three times as deep as they are wide. So we could plant these, you know, somewhere between half to an inch deep deep into our ground and then let them grow up. Now, what are you trying to grow in the cucurbit family? If we're talking about cucumbers, we're gonna plant those at least 12 inches apart. If we're talking about something like this big cucutsa, I might plant that 24 inches or two feet apart. Squash, I'm gonna put those anywhere between 12 to three feet apart, depending on if they're vining or if they're bush types, which we're gonna see here in a minute. So with cucurbits, you really wanna give them lots of room between the crops. One, to minimize the insects and the disease flashing from one plant to the other and creating those habitats. Two, so they don't outcompete themselves. You don't want a whole bunch of cucurbit vines and nothing growing on it. So, this is a beautiful cucutsa, but let's walk around right here and see something that you probably do often have in your garden. And we can see right here, we have some lovely squash and zucchini plants. Now on cucurbits, what's different about these from some other plants in this family is that they have both male and female flowers. So when we're looking at these plants, this is a male flower. Do you see right here how the stem goes all the way up to the flower bud without an ovary? Whereas when we come in here, and we're gonna really have to zoom in, this is a female flower bud because you see there's a very short stem and you see the small squash right here, right below the flower bloom that'll be opening later. That's a female flower. So you need a bee to visit between the male and the female flowers at least 10 to 12 times to get adequate pollination. I'm so glad we're standing right in this spot because you see this squash right here? This one has been adequately pollinated. I can tell that because the back end, and I just knocked off the flower, doesn't look like it's rotting. So this, we could harvest now and it'll be tender and delicious, or we could wait and let it get a little bit bigger and have a little bit more um, bang for our buck. But do you see this squash right here? See how this one kind of looks bad and like it's sort of just wilting towards the end and curling up? So this one, the bees didn't visit this female flower enough with enough pollen. The seeds up here at the top of this squash plant were fertilized, so it's starting to swell. But back here, because the seeds were not fertilized, it's just shriveling and there's nothing we can do with this but take it off the plant and throw it into our compost pile. We're never gonna eat this squash. It just wasn't properly fertilized. Now, if we come over here, we're gonna look at these gorgeous zucchini plants. Now, you guys, a lot of people often call me or send me emails and they say, oh my gosh, I have white or silver on my squash or my zucchini plants. This is a varietal trait. This is not powdery mildew. This is just a variety trait of some squash and some zucchini. So you don't wanna worry about that. If the whole thing was covered in white powder, then we would have a problem. But once again, let's come down and look deep in this zucchini plant. Look how prolific, guys. We've had lots of bees out here. Beautiful zucchini right here. You could go ahead and eat that if you want to. And again, here we didn't get enough pollination on this particular fruit. I think I just saw a bee fly out of here. So 
Let's come around a little bit more. We've seen squash, we've seen zucchini, and we've seen cucutza. But let's come on in here into the trellis. These students have done a wonderful job maintaining this garden. And actually, the director of this garden is Dr. Carl Motzenbacher. So props to him, because this is a great looking garden. Right here, we have one of my most favorite plants in the world. If you were in my family last year, you got this for Christmas, only you got it at, in a dried out version. This is the birdhouse gourd, okay? And this is developing right here. It's gonna get a little bit longer and a little bit wider, and you're gonna know it's ready to harvest when it feels nice and hollow. If you were to pick this up, if you guys were standing here in the garden with me, you could feel the weight of this thing. This is nowhere near being harvested. It's gonna stay light green, but it's gonna swell, and when it feels hollow, you can tell the seeds are drying out, that's when you're gonna cut it. And when you harvest, whether it's a birdhouse gourd or again, in this family, pumpkins, you wanna harvest it up here with a very long stem. The longer your stem, the better shelf life you get off this. If you harvest too close to the top of the fruit, what you end up getting is water coming in through the top and it rots a lot quicker. So go ahead and clip it up here when it's ready to harvest. We don't have any that are ready to harvest yet, but Randy, come on through with me. Randy's our camera guy, y'all. And let's look at these gorgeous birdhouse gourds that are getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger here and here. They're not always gonna be that unique bowling pin shape size. Some of them will be a little more round, but these are really cool crops. Cucurbits are something definitely to add to your garden. We're gonna have to watch for aphids and cucurbits. We're gonna have to watch for worms and cucurbits, slugs and snails. And the best thing I can tell you guys to do for disease and insect management is really give them wide spacing. That way they're not overlapping each other a lot. When you can, trellis up your cucurbit crops. A lot of people don't trellis their cucumbers, but doing them on a trellis just like this would be excellent because most of these insects hang out on the undersides of leaves. And when you have them trellised, it's a lot easier to get in there with your soaps, you know, some of your lightweight oils or some of your insecticides that you wanna use. So that's what we have to say today about the cucurbit family. It's a great crop to grow. It doesn't need a lot of fertilizer. I do want you to pre-plant fertilize and I do want you to side dress fertilize it so when it begins to bloom or before these vines begin to run, add a little more nitrogen. But other than that, y'all, great crop to add to your garden. I hope y'all enjoyed this class and if you have any questions, call Anna and Joe and Chris. They're excellent county agents. Thank you.